I'll have a bloody question asked in Parliament, that's what. Oh, another week of this and we souvenirs won't fix nothing. Man will be ruined. Any sign of relief yet, mate? No. I was due ten hours ago. Be out here soon, boys. <laughs> you all right, Bill? It's this beautiful dusky maiden in a grass skirt, walking up the beach from the coral reef, carrying two of the biggest trout I ever saw. When I open my eyes, what do I see? Bloody Flanagan. Hell of a time to be thinking of a fish dinner, mate. Who said I was thinking of a feed? <laughs> You've got to look after yourself, Bill. <laughs> Only hurts when I laugh. Did you hear? Canadians on our left took Passchendaele yesterday. Right. Oh, come on, mate. It was a bloody good effort. What for? We've shot our bolt. A blind man would know it. All we've done is create a bog 12 miles wide behind us. Guns can't get up. Or supplies. No guns, no advance. We just about had it won, eh? Yeah. Fritz is laughing at us now. Him in green fields and we're stuck here in the mud. Nothing changes. Hey, any news of Dinger? No. I reckon he's shot through for good. I don't reckon he'd have bothered taking those German prisoners all the way back either. Rolly, could have gone back and had that redressed, you know. No, thanks, Sarge. Probably be drowned if I tried to get back by myself. Won't be long now, mate. Hey, Sarge, eh? is it true they're going to bring boats in and row us here? Who told you that, Wood? Look, next time anyone tells you something, make sure they cross their heart first, all right? Hello there. 8th Australian Battalion. The Tandar Arbuckle. East Lax. Where the hell are you been, chum? Where's the officer? I admit. I asked where you've been, you're ten hours late. Well, you wouldn't believe it. The staff officer bloke says it's one and a half hours to come up. But I can tell you, we've been 11 hours on the go. My lads have done up. Them the got here. Welcome aboard, Mr. Arbuckle. Name's Flanagan. Follow me and I'll show you around. See if I can get hold of a strong drink for you and your men. We greatly appreciate or against us. Listen, mate, I'd be all right if I could get me feet out of the flame and stirrups. Another old joke like that and I'll shove you right back in. Who's he? That's General Kegel, Chief of Staff to General Haig. Don't get his car muddy, will you?
send the men to fight in this? That's as may be, but he's a soldier in a war. I do not want to see her hurt. No, but they reckon it's going to be called off, mate. The battlefield's completely bogged. Oh, good. I could use a couple of weeks to get these books into shape. There is nothing wrong with them. It's the French normal system. Oh, yes, see, but the Australian system's completely different. How come your mathematics always come up more for you? I see lovers quarrel. Oh, what well, you see, you don't allow for things. Since Passchendaele, they've given us light duties, warm billets, good tucker. What's going on? I'm beginning to get suspicious. You know what I mean? Maybe that's what the fatted calf felt like. Well, if it isn't me old mate, Sergeant Watson. You looking for something, are you? Somebody. Flanagan. What for? We all know what for. The Colonel wants to see him. Haven't seen him. Yeah? I don't know, but here comes our sunshine. Mm -hmm. Good day. Good day, Sergeant. You want to see me? How'd you guess? The old man wants to see you right away. Well, boys, see you in the spring. We can't let him. Well, at least they can't shoot him. He only knocked the officer out. Can't we do something? I mean, he saves our lives, and now they're going to throw the book at him. That's the army. Oh, there must be something. A word, just like we've been doing. Captain Young states in his report that someone, most probably you, struck him unconscious in an unprovoked attack during the Battle of Brutzi and Ridge. What have you to say? It was dark, sir, and a lot was happening. I know what it was like. Have you anything else to add? No, sir. The regimental sergeant major questioned a score of soldiers who would have been in plain view of the incident. Not one of them saw anything. Do you find that amusing, Flanagan? No, sir. Captain Young, it now remains for me to decide what action to take in regard to Sergeant Flanagan. Please withdraw to the adjutant's office. Certainly, sir. You know that the maintenance of discipline must always be a paramount aim of the Army. Yes, sir. And that relations between officers and other ranks is the key concern of military law. And that breaches of this law attract the harshest penalties. Do you know why this should be so, Sergeant? I hope you do. Without these constraints, an army would only be an armed rabble. There's not mere theory, Sergeant. There have been reports of unarmed German prisoners apparently shot dead behind Australian lines. I understand, sir. Then why? I did what I thought was right at the time. I still think it was, sir. I have here a recommendation for an award for gallantry signed by the adjutant. 
It concerns your attack on Pilvox Emma and your steadiness in consolidating the company on its final objective. There can be no thought of forwarding it now. Get out. Sergeant, you know and I know that you should be court-martialed, but that's impossible. You've got brains, Flanagan, you know why. Firstly, you could call 50 of the best soldiers as witnesses to testify for you. Captain Young could call none. Secondly, it would appear that the authorities had brought over to France a man incompetent to command men in battle. There'd be no way of suppressing a scandal. Now go before I change my mind. Since there's no black mark on your conduct sheet, you may as well have these. And if you ever come before me again, I'll cut you off at the crown jewels. Is the old man going to court martial you? No, mate. Worse than that. Maybe we can buy your way out of it, What they did was make me an officer. <laughs> hey, I'll scrape at the bottom of the barrel. Just as well we got a navy. <laughs> Thanks again for everything. They said I wouldn't have pulled through without you. <laughs> I'm going to miss you. Come on, love. Be a sport. I want to get you to see. I know precisely what you want, and this behaviour must stop forthwith. <laughs> Take it off your bike, missus. Missus? Return at once to your ward, or I'll put you in charge of the military police. Pliny. I've never been in charge of anything in my life. Oh, since they arrived, this hospital has been sheer bedroom. And it's getting worse. Absolutely reprehensible. Well, Sister Baker, I didn't expect to see you here again. We don't seem to have much trouble with you, ma'am. No. Ah, oh, but then you're... Australian, too, aren't you? In any case, visiting hours are over. The hospital boat train leaves in ten minutes. Out, out, please go out. Out you go. Oh, hang on, leave this to me, boys. The Cleary Charm. Uh, excuse us, uh, Mum, Mrs. Uh, <coughs> oh, oh Mum. Yeah, I know it's after visiting hours now, but we just wanted to come and see our mate, and you look like a bit of a sport. Eh? <laughs> Colonel! What's wrong with her? <laughs> My stitches. If I survive you blokes, I'm bound to beat the guys in England. But... Yeah, being the nurses I'd be worried about. Yeah. <laughs> Any word on Max? He's fine, mate. It's just a bit of eye trouble. Yeah. Yeah, no worries. Congratulations. Well, thanks, mate. Oh, yeah, yeah, a bit of big brass with us now. Yeah. He's having lessons this week on how to eat with a knife and fork. <laughs> you can tell by the pop marks around his mouth. <laughs> well, I beg your pardon, sir. We'd best be going. The, the matron seems a bit upset. Yeah, well, um, we are just like a, a minute or so with our mate. <laughs> oh, the originals. The class of 1940. So uh, uh, not me, remember. I was a Gallipoli reinforcement. Oh, yes, a bloody new chum, that's right. Well, see you back in Aussie, Monty. Oh, I don't know. I might get this old wing back together in England. Oh, we've talked about that. You can go home now. You've earned it. Yeah, you go and uh, dust off the red carpet for when we come visiting, you know, when this nonsense is over. <laughs> yeah, all yeah, together. Right. All right, sir. Medicine, Don't drink it all at once. Wait for me at home, Marty. Do I should bloody well toll for a change? We know what you did for him, love. 
missing like blazes. I want him to go. Don't you ever lose? No point in losing, mate. Anyway, I've got all Dingo's debts to make up. Yeah, well, we won't be seeing him again. I'd like to see him. I don't care so much about him deserting. It's the five prisoners he shot. Right. Who's in then? Oh, now this is what I call a war. Me too. Keep it like this, and I'm in for life. Boys? Morning, Skip. You all right, Wood? Yeah. Why is he working? Oh, he's skinny. And we're paying him sixpence an hour. Sixpence? <laughs> All right, then ninepence. Anyway, it's the uh, chain of command. Oh. Bet he hasn't even had a drink. Neither have I, for that matter. Oi, you're worse than the bloody overseers. Anyway, you're an officer. Very true, Lance Corporal, and by all rights, I should be putting you to work, mate. Huh. Tough. I thought you were going to an officer's training course at Amy Ends. So I am, after we finish the water bottle, that is. Any more? No, thanks. Nope. Uh, Pay twenties. Pay me! And about bleeding time! <laughs> Why is it all so peaceful, do you think? Maybe Fritz has run out of ideas. Oh, well, that'll be the day. Why if he's up to something? They're keeping very quiet about it if they are. Right, our generals are going. It'll take them six months to put the British Army back together again after Passchendaele. <laughs> Better to keep it this way. Play cards and wait for our pension. Yeah, we were saying that in Gallipoli. Three bloody years ago. Hmm. Long time away from home. Shh. What is it? I listen. Up there. Huh. Yep. And this is what I call a war. in the shade. Dear Mum, thank you for your letter. I got my neighbour to write it for me. What you're asking is just not possible. I've got my duty here. Men are hurt every day, dreadfully hurt, and I can do something for them. There aren't many women in Australia who have the chance, but I have. I've got personal reasons too. Maybe one day I'll have some good news for you. Wonderful news. But there are times when I doubt it. But either way, leave me alone, Mum. I'm Miss Dick too, but he is dead, and my business is with the living before they die too. Say a prayer for me, Mum. We'll have a drink. Both. Your loving daughter, Kay. I don't think I quite understand, Mrs. Baker. What did you say in your letter? I asked her to come home. Why? Because my husband's dead. So is my boy, Dick, and Kate's all I got left. And I wonder, I need a vicar. The wounded need her too. Honour thy father and thy mother. That's one of yours, isn't it? Well, it's one of God the Father's anyway. Love thy neighbour as thyself. That's one of God the Son's. I reckon that's what she's doing. Good news one day, she hopes, only there's times when she doubts it. Sounds exactly like loving your neighbour to me. Surprise! <laughs> I wangle the weekend's leave. 
Good, good. How is it? Ah, we'll be all right. I just had to see you before you sailed. Colonel Legg says he can have you on a boat home in three weeks. Yeah. <clears throat> well, love, uh, I'm not going to Australia. What? I'm seeing Keith Murdoch about a staff job. You promised me you'd go home. You promised me. Yeah, I know, but, you know, when I thought about it, I mean, all things considered, I'm not in bad shape to manage a staff job. Liar. You're a bloody liar. You've got a chance to go home. A lot of men would envy you that. Love, I can't go back. You're not to listen to that. You know, it's only my arm out of action, not my brain. I can be of some use here. You really want to be with the boys, don't you? Yeah, of course I do. I don't know a damn thing about you anymore. <laughs> How can you say that? Well, when I came here, you didn't kiss me. You didn't even hey, say hello. What are you talking about? That's right to the wall. We've got to finish it first. By we, you mean you, personally. Maybe I do, I mean, I don't know anymore. I've been fighting for three and a half years now. Just like me. Kate, I've got to go back. I've got to see this through. Go then. Shove off and play soldiers. Go to hell, Marty. deserve it. I signed on for the duration, after all. Well, I'm going to need a damn good reason. If there's one thing that the troops hate, more than Fritz and the weather, it's a staff. I mean, not your divisional men, but those champagne sippers up at high headquarters. I mean, the troops see their greatest threat as coming from these incompetent base officers who understand nothing of the fighting man's needs. If I was to become a staff officer, I mightn't be able to change much as a junior, but I could sure as hell protest against schemes which are downright bloody murder. I mean, believe me, the situation's beyond a joke. Some British units have openly stated that they'd rather shoot at the staff than Fritz. In the French army, the staff officers are no longer going to wear their armbands. I see what you mean. Look, I'm gonna tell you something, and this is most confidential. The five Australian divisions are to be unified, finally, under their own command. Really? We've been arguing with Haig for two years for this, for the right to fight alongside our own. So, who gets command? Well, hopefully White, maybe Birdwood, and Monash as his supporters. Well, I don't suppose you could get me a posting with one. Oh, Monash, perhaps. His third division's taken some pretty heavy knocks. I mean, the man's a good enough administrator, or so I hear. It might be the best I can do for you. Thank <laughs> you. 
I sold it. And so you go. What's wrong? You've been at the wall, mate. Got a choice. Firing squad back to battalion, or we finish it now, mate. Yeah, come on, Flanagan. Martin isn't coming home. Yet. Oh, what do you mean? Of course he is. He had his medical board. They told him he was unfit for active service. They told him. He's managed to get himself a staff appointment. Oh, I see. Well, that isn't so bad, is it? Yeah. I mean, it isn't dangerous. He used to write and tell us in his letters that the staff never went near the front. Miles back in some chateau, drinking champagne and eating pheasant. It isn't so bad, is it? Please listen. Martin's letter is in many ways a remarkable document. The work of a Christian man, if I may say so. He's done enough. Mrs. Baker wants her daughter back and I want my son. You know, there, there was a time when I, I thought that Martin might marry Kate Baker, and I wouldn't have minded anything as long as he came back to me. Rupert might have, but he'd have come round. Nothing's too good for the returning hero. How is Rupert? You must ask him when you see him. I don't see him, I mean. He's always away on war work and uh, when he's home we quarrel. What about? Oh, patriotism, conscription, how vile is the Hun? God's will. It's so much better when he isn't here. Excuse me, George. I, I don't mean to embarrass you. Martin and Kate Baker. Now there's a marriage to look forward to, Thea. Yes. But I'm... So afraid he only thinks of death. That's why he can't leave the place where death is so busy. <laughs> to the Prime Minister. As you are aware, our request for reinforcements for 1918 was 600,000 men. To date, we have received no more than 100,000 Class A men. I have to inform you that this is placing a great strain on the fighting capacity of our infantry. 
Whatever you or your advisors regard as a decisive front in this world war, I'm bound to say that the Germans regard it as here in France. My intelligence sources have already identified some additional 60 German divisions in movement to France from the east following Russia's collapse. The odds have swung dangerously in Germany's favor. It's obvious they intend to go for a knockout blow at an early date. I trust that whatever the future holds, we will both be able to say we did all in our power to guard against a catastrophe. Trying to scare me, is he? Well, if so, he's failed. He has more men in khaki now than he had this time last year. The military monarch's appetite is unabated. But remember, Prime Minister, they're mostly support troops, not infantry. Well, I will not endure Haig's profligate use of manpower any longer, and that's that. In any case, Hanky, the army will be on the defensive most of this year. We are waiting for the Americans. Oh, that may be longer than you think. At this moment, not ten months since they joined the war, the Americans have fewer than seven divisions formed. And remember, Prime Minister, we and the French have to supply all their artillery and most of their aeroplanes. Yes, but their numbers. There are immense numbers, certainly. But they're raw and untrained. Well, let's go back to the possibility of opening up a second front in the Balkans. The Bosch. Ah, the Germans are miles away. Huh, not anymore. Here, Pat, is this place selling grog or not? Certainly is, but what do you want? Three cognacs. No. Ah, be silly. Here. Help yourself. You panic on over nothing. No need to go walk about. I am not playing, Pat, believe me. The Bosch are coming, and I am not waiting to say hello. Here. This is your share, up to last night. Still reckon old Phil Marshall Hague ought to put her on the payroll. Yeah. She's got her own spy network on the other side. Yeah, I'll set them up. This is not necessary. Remember, Hun's been a good boy for weeks. Huh? Hey, those are nail guns. Ah, uh, they're miles away. Well, wherever it is, mate, it's on for young and old. Or Fritz, sir. Germans that close, are they? They're all over the place, sir. Looks like it could be the big breakthrough this time. Army ends could go any time. You know where the Australian divisions are? Afraid not, sir. I'll ask inside. Uh, sir, place is empty. Officers have gone. Where are you going? Back to Calais Base HQ, sir. We could, uh, we could give you a lift if you like. No, thanks. I'm going the other way. Get that junk out of the car. Don't you obey orders in the British Army? Cheer up, lads. It's not your fault. That's not what the Colonel will say. I'll tell you what. I'll give you a receipt for the car and for one bottle of brandy. Thank you very much, sir. That'll do nicely. Very hot on paperwork, it's the Colonel, sir. Very hot.
Captain Barrington, sir. Oh, Barrington, yes. You're the fella that Keith Murdoch had foisted onto me. You're a little early, Captain. Yes, sir. Well, I thought I'd better get here as quickly as I could. Uh, no one seems to know what they're doing in Olion. Captain Barrington, no one seems to know what they're doing along the entire Somme front. The British 3rd and 5th Armies appear to have disintegrated. Sir, we have a line through now. It's a bloody nightmare. Jerry's advanced so fast that all our communications have been overrun. We can't find the British Corps headquarters. Our division's moving up as fast as it can, but I don't think it's going to be able to get here. We must have detailed information on the German positions. Well, I know this part of the country very well, sir. Do you now? Yes, sir. Ah, an original 8th Battalion man. Yes, sir. And a DCM. Commissioned in the field? Yes, sir. And you know this country, you say? Yes, sir. I could go forward and find out where the Germans are. Right, quick as you can. Search along the Villas Bretner Road here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Where's your officer? We were tunneling, sir, and Mr. Rycroft hurt himself in an accident. We sent him off by ambulance a couple of hours ago. We've been on the move ever since, sir. Which is pretty close, huh? Pretty close, sir. About two or three miles. So, uh, what are you doing now? We've been on the run since yesterday, sir, and we reckon we've come far enough, so we're digging in. Good man. Good man! Wouldn't care to stay with us, sir. Be a pleasure and an honor, Sergeant. Keep digging. Sir. Right. You heard the officer. We're staying here, so get dug in. General Monish, as quick as you can. Why did Tell him I'm making myself here. useful here until he decides otherwise. I want you to dig this in much deeper. Yes, sir. I couldn't help noticing that you're on the staff, but I wondered if this was a planned resistance. I mean, my chaps are a little tired, but there's still a lot of fight in them. Follow me. Come along, chaps. McDonald! That's not the way well, to You've had a pretty yeah, tough time, huh? Yes, rather. The whole frontline company is wiped out in the bombardment. Then Jerry worked his way behind us. Specially trained men called stormtroops. You better add a bit of depth in, digging all the way along here. Tractor. He's digging. <laughs> I say he's from the Bosch. I say he's from the Bosch. Bravo! You have a little time still. They are about three kilometers behind. Merci. Ah, oh, come in, Keith Bach. Come in. Very cheerful, sir. No, I'm not. Sit down. Bad news? The worst. The very worst. Then why so cheerful? Pas de vanly domestique. Oh, not before the servants. It sounds better in French. Even my French. Oh, I must stop making these stupid jokes. God knows I've got nothing to joke about. What's happened, sir? I rather think I've got my wish. It looks as if I may have reason to get rid of Haig. But at rather too high a price. What price would that be, sir? It is all too possible that we may lose this war. The Germans have broken through on two fronts now. Breakthrough, you say? 
And no amount of military persiflage will persuade me otherwise. What about the French Strategic Reserve formed by you and Clemenceau? Are they committed? Ah! As his commanding general says, all I have is the pennant on my car. And as for the rest of our military experts, Foch is making heroic speeches to himself in the mirror. Pétain is catatonic and wants to surrender. And General Wilson is proposing battle plans as long as he doesn't have to take the responsibility for carrying them out. And Field Marshal Haig. Haig has lapsed into a silence, unusual even for him. Can it be that he is actually on the brink of admitting that he may have made a mistake? Is there any reserve, sir? Yes. The five Australian divisions, the Canadians, and a few battered English ones. What are you thinking? that the heartless British are about to throw your Australians back into the breach again? There doesn't seem to be much choice, does there? A note from Captain Barrington, sir. The Germans are advancing along the Corby Road in strength. Position approximately here. Well, why didn't he report in person? He says he found a few fellas with guts enough to dig in, so he thought it right he should dig in too. Really? What a staff officer's coming to. Hurry up, lads. We haven't got all day. Mind if we join you, sir? Looks like you've had enough for the time being, huh? Well, the truth is, sir, we can't walk much further. And we'd rather fight and wait for Jerry with our hands up. Uh, any of you drive a car? I can, sir. Could you drive this car? Oh. Would be a pleasure, sir. Come on, dig, lads. Jerry won't wait for us. Drive to the nearest advanced dressing station. Use the chit for the MO. Explains how you got the car. Oh, go on, Dad. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for the offer. Good luck. Yes. Hop in. Find the clutch. I'll give it a start. Right. You get used to a lot of waiting about in the army, but this was different. We'd read of the German breakthrough near Amiens, of the loss of the towns that had cost us so much blood and sweat. Bullecourt, Bapalm, Pozieres, even Albert. The mood among the boys was changing from amazement to anger. Our division was the only one that hadn't been put in against the Germans down south. We couldn't understand why. By all accounts, Fritz was very close at that moment to winning the war. About bloody time. Come on, boys, your tip's over. I wonder where they're going to take us now, Pat. Get your gear together. Move it. Give it up, man. Uh, monsieur, could you please try... Soon you will have company, monsieur. They are very close now. And my people are very tired. Could you please try and get your people near the edge of the road, huh? You are asking too much, Capitaine. They are not soldiers. We cannot sacrifice our families. Surely you realize that. Well, our soldiers are coming. I hope so. You are not many to hold back the German army. No, but they will come, believe me. Which soldiers? Your countrymen? That's right. Very soon. Very soon. Il dit que les Australiens arrivent tout de suite. It's that right, sir. Your blokes are coming. God help me if I'm wrong, Sergeant. Sir, could you come and have a look at the gun emplacement we've set up? Come on, man, get your weapons ready. The Germans are coming. Elliot. 
to Monsieur le Curé. We do not worry now. It is safe to go home. Uh, we know you Australians from 1916. You will stand and fight. Is that not so? Oui, monsieur. Oui. En avant, en avant. Where did you come from? Oh, far side of Amiens, miss. Well, you believe in travelling in style, don't you? It was an Aussie officer gave us the car, miss. Which Aussie officer? He was digging in up on a hillside. Him and a lot of our lads. Oh, all sorts there was. Um, Royal Engineers, East Kent, Durham Light Infantry, Gordons, all sorts. Funny, though, he, he was the only Australian. I'll tell you something else was funny and all. Well, you do that. I could do with a good laugh. Well, this officer, he was on staff. Red armband, all of that. Except he didn't act like he was on staff, did he? No, he acted like he knew what he was doing. <laughs> Not like he was on the staff at all. What was he like? Oh, well, he was very nice to us, miss. A proper gent. Did you get his name? No, miss. Yes, we did. He gave us a chip, miss, on account of the car. Martin Barrington, cat. Might have known. Are we this time, Kaiser? Hasbrook. Hasbrook? But that's where we started from yesterday. It's a bloody stuff up again. No, no, it's all right. How many of you blokes have been in the army for four years and you still haven't woken up to the army sense of humour? What? What are you blithering about? Well, it's logical, isn't it? It's two weeks past the first of April, right? Mm hmm. The staff's always two weeks behind with everything. This is an April Fool's Day joke. Drive us round in circles. You got it? The officers are getting down for a stretch. Oh, I suppose they need to. Must have stiff backsides, riding round all day on them big fat cushions, eh? There's a pommy officer coming to speak to them. Brass hat. Gentlemen, I am instructed to inform you that the expected German attack in the north has commenced. Bloody hell, Flanagan was right. Yeah, he's always bloody right when he says we'll get shot at. Amontier has already fallen. The enemy are pushing hard against Calais and Dieppe. If they succeed, we will be cut off from Great Britain. I am further instructed to inform you that the 1st Australian Division is the only formed body of troops between here and the Channel ports. So, it's all up to you. Good luck. We bloody need it, mate. That's for sure. OK, everybody out. All right, roll up, roll up. It's on again. Seems funny going off to fight without Marty, doesn't it? Ah, uh, he's better off where he is, Rolly. Where is Marty, anyway? Where the staff always are, tucked up in some shadow with a bottle of champagne for a nightcap. How's it going up his end? Make it a little difficult for the Germans at 1,700 yards, sir. Good. Right there, Kimberley. Oh. Targets are a bit sparse. I think they've changed their mind. Marin, keep the ammunition up to this end. Bring up the more ammunition. I'm looking for a Captain Barry. Yes. Ah, Driscoll, 10th Brigade. Martin Barry. Uh, the word from on high, Captain, you can knock this foreign legion off. Sir, we're only men. Heaven prints a nasty shock, and so the brigade's about to move forward. You've been stood down. With many thanks. Oh, there's a verbal message too. Uh, a certain general wants a certain captain back on his staff again. Too sweet. 
back to getting the stuff. Well, at least you'll be able to tell your kids what you did in the Great War, sir. <laughs> what about you? Ah, uh, don't worry about me, sir. I'm regular. I'm here because you... I'm here, as they say, sir. Good luck. Thanks. Thanks, sir. I wish I was going with you. Off you go. I'll look after them. There's a straggler's collection point further down the road. They're not stragglers. They're some of the best men I've ever fought. Sorry. Them. I'll look after them, right? Gentlemen, the dress standards of this headquarters are declining. I must have a word to the chief of staff. The British are already half convinced we're all bush ranchers, and I hear you've been running a private army of Tommies. How were they? Good men, sir. Only some of their top brass were. Well, there's a quotation from Napoleon that covers it. There's no such thing as a bad soldier, only bad officers, eh? It's a pity about the British. They draw their officers from a narrow social class. Oh, some of them are good. But in a war like this, there's not enough of those to go round. It's cost them dearly. Now, Barrington, you assaulted me on the basis of your brains. It's about time we put that to the test. Now, look here. We've given the Germans a bloody nose right there, temporarily. They still outnumber us four to one, but if we can keep them unsettled for, say, 48 hours, there'll be time to bring up the extra Australian divisions. I intend to do this with a series of local counterattacks. I want you to do a study of the ground where we can achieve the greatest success at the smallest cost. Have the appreciation in front of me in three hours. Corporal Wallace. You're wrong, mate. Don't call me, mate. Your name's Wallace. As a matter of fact, it's Harris. Corporal Wallace, West Kent. No, mate. Corporal Harris, 8th Battalion, 1st Divi, AIF. You killed your officer and deserted your regiment in Afghanistan. Must be a pretty stupid place for a deserter to be, wouldn't you say? You're under arrest, Wallace. I mean, just suppose you're right. Just for the sake of argument. Here's me with a the rifle. There's you. No one else about. You won't get away with it. I'll report you for this. There's a place like this between Ballarat and Dalesford. There's bugger all between Ballarat and Dalesford. There's a place just like this up on the Wimmera. Yeah, I know the place. It's near Natama. Well, this is exactly the same. Yeah, only the Wimmera's full of gum trees and dust. There's not much grass there, and the air's chocker with parakeets and galahs, and all you can hear are cicadas. And the smell's different, and the light's different, because up there the sun's a big orange bastard. It takes about an hour and a half to set. And, of course, you don't have Germans charging through your fence every 20 or 30 years. Yeah, but aside from that, Pat, you've got to admit it's bloody like a Wimmera. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, Captain Hayden and the company Sergeant Major have been sent to form the nucleus. You are now acting company commander. Hell of a bloody time to spring this on me. 
Couldn't you run a raffle or something? You'll deploy your men in defence of the Nip Forest area here, to the southeast. Now you're to hold this line here. From there to there? Correct. Well, any friendlies in front? The Guards Brigade. Last heard of surrounded, but fighting. So, do we know how Fritz is operating? Yeah. They've worked out new tactics. A combination of artillery and this flying wedge arrangement instead of a mass attack. Machine gunners and bombers in front. General advance behind them. When did they start all this? Two days ago. They'll be buggered. Our blokes are fresh. I wouldn't think they'd be too buggered, mate. They've hardly been opposed since day one. Ah, they're well trained, well supplied, reinforced and confident. We're in for a bit of a stoush, I'm afraid. We'd better get on with it then. The orders are that you're to hold your position at all costs. If necessary, down to the last man. Good luck, eh? Well, sir, if the men break position here, it won't be to go back that way. Bill! Get up! You've just been promoted acting company Sergeant Major. Now we'll use that farmhouse up there until we get organised, all right? Kaiser? Right, so that'll be our line, a series of posts. Got the picture then, Bill? Couldn't be simpler. We're on a battalion front, need 600 men easy. We're going to defend it with a company. After the knocks we've taken, the company consists of exactly 97 blokes who can still walk. Like I said, it's easy. Ah, but then you're smart. I must be, I'm one of the 97. We can do it, you know. We've got to do it. Tommy! Back home! Double credit! Beautiful, isn't it, Smithy? Not a sign of wire or mud. Do me, mate. Yeah, I feel like a kid on my first Sunday school picnic. What, you're not worried about what might happen? Worried? Pay me six bob a day for this. They make all my decisions. Provide free transport to the appointed place and throw in three meals a day. Now, you compare this to humping a swag around the outback, under the blazing sun, 100 miles between pubs. Nothing but the crows for track mates. Good, I miss it. <laughs> you got a good field of fire? You got fields of fire to burn. Never seen so many fields of fire. All we need is a few guns to fire, mate. So I made it to you. Want to watch this one? He's a stickler for the rules. Still got a bit of pom in him. Right. There these branches. I want them laid on top, so none of this fresh soil shows. Now, the secret of this sort of scattered defence, camouflage and concealment. That's right. Now, Bluey's post is over there. Whereabouts, Bill? I can't see it, mate. You're not supposed to see it. Neither is Fritz. Now, Bluey can cover your front, and you can cover his if need be, OK? It's called mutual support. What the hell's happened, Cleary? You pinched somebody's field manual? Nah, I'd never admit to being a pro, but you know, some of it rubs off on you after a while. You know, like a lump of shit. Don't sh say it! Just dig! Hey, you were a bait layer in your time, weren't you? Oh, yeah. I ain't one to brag, but I was voted best cheer as cook at Big Willander and Kadinji. Good. As soon as you're dug in, you can report to company headquarters. You just officially become Chief Spud Barber. <laughs> Trust the bastards once they get a bit of prank. More branches on the left flank. Thanks, I made you. Where do you think you're going? Come here. Into that line. Boom! Straggler collecting point over there. Now, the only thing back there is the English Channel. We're staying here. Move, son! More earth on that parapet, Perkins. More cover here. 
Sergeant Major, can we be part of this? The guards? Certainly you can, son. Everybody's invited. Where's the guards now? Mostly dead where they stood, sir. Help dig in over there, lads. How's the digging on your flank, Bill? Oh, coming along nicely. Message from battalion reckons we can expect them in two to three hours. Why don't you get your head down for a couple <sighs> of hours? You might be glad of it later. Yeah, I will. Wake me in an hour. Right. Off you go. Company's on 50% stand to. Spud bashing. Ah, oh, I don't assist him. Now look what I found. So what? Now, if they had someone in them, well... Uh... Mate, they're silk. You beauty, Pat! <laughs> sure colour, Blue. Have to get a postcard and send it back to her, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's a bit of a funny time for playing dress-ups, isn't it? Get into them, Dopey. They're silk. The only thing lice won't live in. Hey, no. look! <laughs> you have a ton of stuff up there. They must have had to hear them, that bloke. Yeah. Hey, and a dirty old bugger as well. <laughs> <laughs> look at this. Who's in charge here? Give her. I am, sir. Going to make a fight of it, lad? Yes, sir. Good man. Get me a rifle. Sir, you can't go into the line. I haven't got time to argue with me, Lieutenant. Pat, get the Colonel a rifle and show him your position. Stand to! Stand to! Move! Mate. Uh, sir. Now pick your targets, lads. If Blue gets into trouble, cover him. Trev, this goes right, you're on a strike. Fast as can, Tom. Picnic? Jolly good. Prince will be here any moment. Welcome aboard.
Tell a party and collect whatever weapons you can find. And get the wounded to the rear as quickly as possible. That. The rest of you stay put. End of round one. I say, would you uh, care for a mouthful of brandy? It's uh, very civil of you, mate. Uh, Colonel? Yes. Thank you. Cheerio, old chap. Jolly pleased to have met you. Thanks for the help. Drop in any time. Work, boys! Time for a brew! Carno! Sense me. Oh, that's my soul. You've been in this, sir? Yes, sir. Best day's work in a long march, eh? Nice to make a stand of it, sir. But, sir, it appears that some of our chaps are still hard at it off to the east. Well, in that case, we'd best go and join them. Can't let these colonial chappies do all the work. Then, Corporal, tell your commanding officer that the 1st Battalion of the Lancashire Fusiliers fought the last man. Lead on, gentlemen. Changing shots. Right, this is the main event. You all know what the story is. We're here to stay. Now, every individual position must hold. If we lose one, we lose the lot. Now, if one post gets into trouble, the other post will fire an assistance. And as last resort, I'll commit company reserve, all right? 
Who's got the Tommies? I have. How are they? Well, do. Right, I want you to keep an eye on the Lewis gun positions. If they get knocked, we're stuffed. Tom, phone line three yet? Wasn't two minutes ago, but they're working like buggery. All right, your positions. Keep your heads down. You can't find me when the line's through. Get it to Bill. Until we get artillery support, all we can do is hold. How long can we do that? Until we get artillery support. You are now the company reserve. Stop fiddling with that rifle, that man. Mr. Flanagan's last hope. The plan is we're going to stay here. It's a perfectly good plan, and we won't have the Germans bugger it up. I'll make every shot count. I wonder which bloody way they'll come this time. I don't know. But they won't hit the same place. Just answer the question. Let's do it. Good luck. Where'd they go? They're using their brains this time. Junior Rip, I've got to warn you about taking this war on by yourself. Through. About bloody time. Guns? 
SOS Sector 12, 1416. That's our position. You've given them our position. Where the hell do you think the bloody hun are? Take cover! How are you doing, Rowley? Fine, Kaiser. I could do with a drink. <sighs> Fat chance of that round here, mate. Get on you, Tom. Buy a beer for that, mate. You're on. Special award from General Cleary. We see and bar. Thanks, Pat. Good India. Thanks. Thanks. Him gentle when you take him back to the aid post. Sergeant Major Harris. I report to my colonel that today I saw an Australian Sergeant Major in action who would have been a credit to the buffs themselves. Good luck, Harris. Good luck to you, sir. I'll notify HQ Lee of defence successful. Right, and another number two from Louis. Good job, boys. Good day. Got any target to spare you, bloke? You buggers get out of here. We'll look after the food. We fight in UE. That's a piss poor arrangement. Where are the rations? There should be rations in here. Hey, Rowley, come and have a look at this. What's it say, mate? Hey, listen to this. What is it, Rowley? Order of the day, 11th of April, 1918. From the Commander-in-Chief, Field Marshal Sir Douglas Hay. Yeah, it's from Hay. There is no other course open to us but to fight it out. With our backs to the wall, and believing in the justice of our cause, each one of us must fight to the end. Backs we against the bloody wall, that's bullshit. Wall. It's been living in shadows too long. What are you doing bringing us this stuff? Well, Sir Major. Well, Skipper. You did all right out there today. <laughs> I've done it before, haven't I? Have you? <laughs> you know I have. Well, it's none of my business. Stoner crows. You lot have been after my secret for the last four years. No one to tell it. You don't want to bloody listen. Come on, then. Get on with it. You joined the British Army back in 1900. Boy soldier. Poor war, all that. What regiment? The Buffs. Ah, Royal East Kent's to you. Struth. You and Kaiser were taking a bit of a chance going back to Kent on leave. 
That's the blokes I knew were dead. Killed at Mons. Before you and me even got to Glibly. Besides, I've been taking a bit of a chance ever since I shot my platoon commander. You what? You've done a bit in that line yourself, haven't you? You mean Captain Young back at Brood scene? That's right. Well, I didn't kill him, mate. You saying you wouldn't have? He'd gone on getting us all killed. Don't mind it. When all this happen? Northwest Frontier. 1907. He led us into a Python ambush. Tried to run away and leave us to it. I'd just been made up a sergeant. I was a good soldier. Keen. I was going to be company sergeant, mate. But your company's our major now, mate. They catch me. I'll hang. I reckon shooting your officer's the cause of that. Makes the others a bit touchy, you know? Yeah. Just remember one thing, Bill. You belong to us now, mate, and we're not going to let you go. And Anzac hath joined together, let no pom put us under, mate. Come on, let's go and join the party. Yeah! Oh, must you? Is that all the welcome I get? How long have you got? Till tomorrow. I can arrange it. Matron owes me a favour. Just give me five minutes to get changed. Mm -hmm. And then the long lunch. It's a French custom, among other things. <laughs> anyway, that's enough of my repetitive hospital routine. Tell me what you've been doing these last weeks. Oh, you know, usual stuff, officer stuff. How many sets of underwear does the bath unit need per man, per day? Liar. I said liar. All right, I heard you. A group of wounded Tommies turned up in a car with a chit signed by Captain Barrington. How did they? And furthermore, they told me about this Australian officer who was digging in for some mad last-ditch stand. Oh, what are you, a perpetual schoolboy? Kate, I only tried when to When help... you pulled strings to stay in France, you said you were going to be safe on staff. You are frightening the daylights out of me by being right up. Just stop. their self-respect. Men who were looking for someone to focus their courage. Now, what would you expect me to walk out on that? Muddy hell. There's going to be more unprincipled men left alive at the end of this war than the other kind. So? So why should my man be one oh, of... yours, huh? Yes, mine. Until a more cynical generation comes along. Thank you very, very much. So help me, I think I'm stuck in the old-fashioned kind. C'est la guerre. C'est la failure. The boss has been promoted, and I have to go with him. The boss? Mm -hmm. He's now commander of the whole Australian Corps. Oh, Monash. Yes, yeah, so I'll end up at Corps headquarters. You can't even hear the guns from there. 
That's marvellous. Oh, yes, isn't it? I'll probably end up giving out blankets and long johns. Oh, glory be. Plan. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm planning to be a staff officer, and uh, like the boss says, reconnaissance, forethought, planning. Number 11 is a lot. Mm -hmm. God help me, matron. I'm being seduced. Eight worse than this, isn't it? <laughs> Where do you reckon we're heading? Oh, I don't know. That's a question I give up asking the army years ago for me peace of mind. Jeez, this countryside. Yeah, I know. It's like the bloody Wimmera. What happened to you? Drop two bob and find sixpence. And your mate. <coughs> Mr Flanagan. Mm. Tell this young buck where you think we're going, will you? So we can all get some peace. Well, the best furphy I've got is that we're headed south to the Somme. Yeah, you happy now? What's the matter, mate? Oh, I don't know. It's the weather. I don't suppose it'd be the, um, the whereabouts of the estaminet stocks and profits, would it? Picked it in one. Oh, mate, it was a gold mine. Yeah, well... Yeah, and beside that, we're worried about the girls, too. Oh, I don't reckon they'll be that far behind us, mate. How do you figure that out? Well, this is the first time all the Aussie divisions are going to be together in one camp. So? So is Madame going to stay north with the Tommies and get a shilling a day? Or is she going to follow the six bob a day warrior south, eh? She's no dummy. That's right. I'm back in business. You bet. You were slipping there for a minute, Pat. Must be your old age, oh, mate. Oh, senility. <laughs> <laughs> I feel great. Hey, Bluey, give us a bit of a song, mate. <laughs> <laughs> ah, bugger it. I'll sing one myself. <clears throat> oh, God. Up to me waist in water. Up, up to your, your eyes in slush. Using the kind of language that makes a sergeant blush. Who wouldn't join the army? That's what we all inquire. And so we pity the poor civilian sitting by the fire. Oh, 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 it's a lovely war. Oh, 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 it's a lovely war. Who wouldn't be a soldier, eh? Oh, it's a shame to take the pay. As soon as rebellion's gone, we feel just as heavy as lead. But we never get up till the sergeant brings our breakfast up to bed. Oh, 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 it's a lovely war. What do we want with eggs and ham? 